Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to determine the vertex uh, when given a quadratic in vertex form. And so what's nice about a quadratic when it's in vertex form is the vertex is pretty easy to identify. And I'm also going to help you uh, identify what the domain and range would be. So uh, first of all, let's understand what exactly the vertex form is. So vertex form, if you remember, actually, let's talk about standard form first. Standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c, where a cannot equal 0, and a, b, and c are going to be all real numbers. Now, that's our standard form. That's something that we're very used to, um, or maybe we're just getting used to. But vertex form, so here's, I'm going to erase this, but because I want to do my work. Here's standard form. Vertex form um, takes its name because it actually gives us what the vertex is going to be. So that would be, let's call this v of x is going to equal a times x minus h squared plus k. Now, in another video, I'll show you how to go from standard form to vertex form. But for right now, we're just going to be focused on what vertex form is. And what's nice about vertex form is it tells you what exactly the vertex is. The vertex is going to be the value of h and k, h comma k. Actually, you know what? I can leave all this stuff up here because we have enough room, so we'll be good. Um, but I don't need to re need standard form in here. I just wanted to go up there to remind students of different forms of that. So our vertex form is in the form um, v, v of x. Well, since there's not one, let's call this f of x. Remember, the number front of function is just going to be its name. So f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k, where vertex is going to be the values of h and k. Notice it's x minus h. But we're looking at the value of actually h. Okay? And that will come into play. I'll, I'll kind of go through that um, as well in a couple when we come up to it. The other thing when we're going to get it talking into domain, remember that the graph of a quadratic is what a lot of times, or not a lot of times, but what we call parabola. And it has the shape of a u. All right? Now, if we're looking forward to obtain the domain and range for this, notice that as this graph gets wider, it's going to continue going up. So the domain is going to be the set of all x values. Well, this graph is going to continue and continue to expand as it goes up. So the domain is going to be all real numbers, or from negative infinity to infinity. Or we can write all real numbers with the double, double line r. The range, however, is the set of all y values that make up the, the function. And what we can see here is we're looking at the range. This graph, yeah, it goes infinitely in, up, but it only goes down to 0. So for the parent graph, my range is now going to be so my parent graph, my range is going to be from 0, 0 to infinity. And I'm going to use a bracket because 0 is actually a value in the range. It actually can be defined from 0 to the range. We can also write this as y is greater than or equal to 0. That's, a, that's what we call interval notation. Um, or not interval. Uh, yeah, our interval notation to be able to identify um, or in, using inequality to represent the range. So I'll use all, all different types of those when we're identifying the domain and range. So on this first example, um, a lot of times students get mixed up with these first two because it's not, or at least in this first one, because it's not in vertex form. So what you can basically look at this is just rewrite it as f of x equals x minus 0 squared minus 2. That's the exact same thing, right? x minus 0 is just x. So in reality, we do know the value of h. The value of h is going to be 0. So the vertex, I want another color. So my vertex, in this case, is going to be 0, comma, negative 2, as h is equal to 0 and k is equal to negative 2. Um, the domain in this example, uh, the domain actually for all of these is always going to be all real numbers. Because it doesn't matter if the graph shifted up, shifted left, right, down, doesn't matter. The graph is always going to expand. So the domain is going to be all real numbers. That's supposed to be an R. That's kind of ugly. So domain will be all real numbers. However, the range, now you can see this vertex, instead of it being at 0, 0, now the vertex has been shifted down two units to 0, negative 2. So now that's going to be the low point, and the graph is still going to go up. So the range is going to be from negative 2 to infinity. Okay. Um, now in this next example, again, this one still does kind of get students confused because they don't see a k. They see the h, um, and, but, but then it has a positive. So this one mixes up students as well. Um, but they don't see the k. So again, I'm going to rewrite this equation as we kind of get some practice. Now instead of this being an x minus, this is in form of x plus. 
So a lot of times to understand how we get our values of, k, of h and k, I'm going to write this as a subtraction problem. So you can see x minus negative 1. x minus negative 1 is the same thing as x plus 1. But now you can see that it's x minus h. So you can see that my vertex in this case is going to be the value of h comma k. Well, I didn't have a k up here, so we can represent that as 0. So that's going to be 1 comma 0. All right, now let's go and talk about domain and range. So my domain, again, is going to be all real numbers. I'll write that a little bit differently this time. I'll write it from negative infinity to infinity. And my range is going to be, now you can see that the graph, the only thing that's happened to the graph, it's been shifted over to the right. So it's basically taking this graph, and instead of the vertex being at 0, 0, now the vertex is at 1, 0. So still the lowest that the graph is going to go for y values is going to be 0. So my range is going to be from 0 to infinity. Okay? Um, now in this next, uh, next example, we have a nice little number 2 in front. But don't let that freak you out. Because remember in vertex form, what's nice about vertex form is, yeah, we have a value a, which could be any, you know, any number. And that does affect our graph, which will become important when coming up soon. But right now, this isn't important really at all. Because it's still good. It, since it's positive, it's, it's not affecting, um, it's not going to directly affect what our value of our vertex is. Our vertex is still going to be h and k. Um, it will affect our, our range, but I'll talk about that later or in our next two examples. So we pretty much can just forget about the 2 since it's positive, or we can just forget about it. And then we can see that our vertex is just going to be that our values of h and k. Well, h in this example is 3, and k in this example is 4. Just kind of notice how it's always, we always use, oops, that's supposed to be a negative 1. I messed up. x minus 1, that should be a negative 1. Right, so instead of shifting the graph to the right, I forgot to write the negative. It's shifting the graph to the left. My apologies, small little mistake. But notice how the vertex is basically the opposite of the value of h inside of there. Or you can always rewrite it the way that I like to do it. Now, let's go and write the domain range. I'm going to write these a little bit differently. I'm going to use inequalities. So the domain, again, is all real numbers. Well, to represent that with an inequality, we could say, our, all our values of x are going to be greater than or equal to infinity, and oh, just greater than, it can't be equal infinity, and they're going to be less than positive infinity. Where our range, if you can see now, now our graph, our vertex, instead of being at 0, 0, it has been now shifted 3 units to the right and 4 units up. So now, if I take this graph, shift it 3 units to the right and 4 units up, now the lowest point is going to be. From the bottom here, it's going to be up four units. So now I can say all my y values, the lowest y value that we have is going to be 4. Previously, it was 0, but I shifted the graph up four units. So now the smallest y value is 4, which is less than y, since we're talking about range, which is going to be less than infinity, because the graph is going to keep on going up towards infinity. OK, so now let's get into one where actually that negative is going to um, affect the graph. Now, it doesn't affect the, the vertex. The vertex is still going to be our h and our k. Remember, it's the opposite here. And let's do this one correctly here. So it's the same thing as x minus negative 3. So we can say that h is going to be negative 3, and k is going to be positive 1. However, what the negative does is that reflects the graph over the x-axis. So it takes this graph, instead of it going up, instead of it as it expands right and left and goes up, now as it expands, it's going to go down. So the y values now are going to be going down to negative infinity, and they're going to only go up to the ceiling of the vertex, which will actually be our, uh, they're going to now have a maximum point. Basically, you can just think of it looking like this. So now they have a maximum. So if you just reflect this graph over, now the maximum point is 0. But in this case, we took our graph and we shifted it left 3, because the vertex is going left 3, and then up 1. But again, remember, the, the um, again, remember that the graph is shifting down because that negative reflects it over the x-axis. So my domain is still going to be all real numbers. Where my range, though, is now going to be from negative infinity all the way up to its highest value, which is 1, because the graph is shifted down in this red, but it's been shifted left 3, up 1. 
Okay? And I'm going to use a bracket because, again, that is a part of the graph where, um, infi where infinity, you can't really, that's not included um, in there. You can't actually contain uh, negative infinity or positive infinity. So here, in this case, um, now we have, again, a negative. It's a fraction, but that's OK. We have fractions all the time. We deal with fractions all the time. That's probably Why do I do all these pluses? Jeez, oh man. OK, so again, let's actually rewrite this one so we can understand it again. So I have negative 1 half times x minus a negative 4 thirds squared. OK, so now, again, we have our k is going to be 0. So now we're not shifting the graph up or down, but we have that negative again. It doesn't, the value is not going to affect, again, the domain and range for that a. Um, but if it's negative, that will affect it. So that's going to reflect it down. However, the domain is going to remain the same. That's going to be from negative infinity to infinity. My range is, yes, it's reflected. So now it's going to be going down instead of um, going to infinity. It's going to be going down to negative infinity. So the highest value is going to be 1 or 0. But now I'm shifting the graph. Why didn't I write the vertex? I'm getting like lazy here. So my vertex is hk. h is negative 4 thirds. And k is going to be 0. OK. But the range, as you can see in this case, is going from negative infinity. And it's going to be going all the way up. Well, all I did was move my graph negative 4 thirds. So my range is still going to be from negative infinity to 0. OK? All right, so let's go into the last one. We see a radical, which is crazy. You're not really going to see it <laughs> very often. But it is something that's a possibility. Uh, I really just wanted to you know, kind of show you guys that um, when you're still doing this, it's still going to go ahead and have that vertex. So in this case, basically, uh, our vertex is going to be hk, which is going to be opposite. So it's going to be negative square root of 5 comma minus 2. All right. Um, our domain, now this graph does not have a negative in front. So the graph is now going to be back opening up. So our domain is going to be from negative infinity is less than x, which is less than infinity. And then our range, you can see that since the graph has been shifted now down, now my range is going to be from negative 2 all the way up to infinity. So it's going to go to negative 2 is the lowest y value, because this graph has been shifted down 2, is less than y, because remember we're talking about range, which is y values, not x values. And then it's going to go all the way up to infinity. So I wanted to show you all three different types of ways of writing domain and range. Whatever your teacher um, or on the test is going to be asked, it's important to kind of know the different ways to use them. But hopefully you understand at least how to identify the vertex, as well as hopefully to identify the domain and range. Thanks. Hello.